Welcome back to the Hannacast YouTube channel, and today I'm going to be talking about the Visual Effects Society Awards nominations and the Motion Picture Sound Editors nominations. This will help us figure out what's going to be nominated for the Visual Effects category and the Sound category, but the majority of this video is mainly going to be talking about the Visual Effects Society Awards because, oh my god. But first, let's talk about the Visual Effects Oscar shortlist that we currently have, alright? They are the creator, Godzilla Minus One, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Napoleon, Poor Things, Rubble Moon, Society of the Snow, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So let's just get to the main category for the Visual Effects Society Awards, and that is Outstanding Visual Effects in a Photoreal Feature, in which the nominees are The Creator, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and Oppenheimer. All right, uh, two big things here. One, well, actually, well, for one, Dungeons and Dragons and Oppenheimer are in here, and yet they're not even shortlisted at the Oscars. On one hand, I'm very surprised over Dungeons and Dragons, but on the other hand, Oppenheimer didn't even make the top 20. It's so strange, because like I literally saw visual effects artists criticizing the fact that they used like a practical explosion for the nuke, because they said, in their own words, it does not look like a real nuke. It looks like a smaller gasoline explosion. But what's also strange is that Oppenheimer is in the top prize category and not in supporting visual effects. Like, if you're gonna nominate it, why is it here? Like, is it just because there's just like no other competition? I mean, The Little Mermaid is still right there. Why is The Little Mermaid getting shut out so badly? The visual effects in that film were not that bad. A again, just the Oppenheimer thing, it's like, they clearly weren't impressed with it at the Oscars, and keep in mind, the Visual Effects Branch and the Visual Effects Society are both comprised of visual effects artists, and there's at least some overlap between the two. Maybe the reason why it got in here was because there was so much backlash that it didn't even make the top 20 at the Oscars that they just, like, overcorrected. The nominees for Outstanding Supporting Visual Effects are John Wick Chapter 4, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Nyad, and Society of the Snow. Society of the Snow getting in is a good sign, because, like, it's been kind of missing everywhere. Like, it hasn't even gotten pretty much anything at the BAFTAs other than film not in the English language. So the fact that it showed up in supporting visual effects here, I think, is a good sign. Napoleon, admittedly, I feel like is starting to creep up. And considering Napoleon got a, got, got a couple of nominations here, we'll, we'll get to the tallies here in a second, but... It's doing pretty well, as well as John Wick 4, which, granted, it's not worth talking about John Wick too much because it's not even shortlisted at the Oscars. It got three nominations here, so that is something. Outstanding visual effects for an animated feature. I wouldn't usually talk about these nominees because they don't really overlap with the Oscars very much, but Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse did get shortlisted at the Oscars, so it is at least worth entertaining. We have... Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, Elemental, Nimona, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Like, I'm pretty sure we're just going to see Spider-Verse just do a complete sweep in the animated categories, because it's probably getting nominated for the Oscar, and it might actually win. But we'll talk about that when we can talk about that. The next category is Outstanding Animated Character in a Photoreal Feature. The nominees are... Topo the Octopus from Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, Godzilla from Godzilla Minus One, Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and the Oompa Loompa from Wonka. Now, this is interesting because this is Godzilla Minus One's only nomination. And to be quite honest, this was kind of a weak category because this was a very weak year for visual effects. And, you know, especially with animated characters, it's very slim pickings. I mean, hell, in a lot of these categories, we only have four nominees, which is not good for the visual effects race. The fact that Godzilla Minus One performed this badly at Visual Effects Society, it's not a good sign. Outstanding animated character for an animated feature, the nominees are Ember from Elemental, uh, Wade from Elemental, Spot from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Superfly from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Especially around the end of Spider-Verse. I mean, they did some really awesome, innovative things with Spot. Like, again, stuff that I can't even imagine how they did that. Outstanding created environment in a photoreal feature. The nominees are The Floating Village from The Creator, 
uh, Nowhere from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, The Underwater Wreck Environment from Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and Place del... Leolary from Java Chapter 4. I don't know French. I probably and most assuredly butchered that. Outstanding created environment in an animated feature. The nominees are Chicken Island from Chicken Run Dawn of the Nugget, Element City from Elemental, Mumbatan City from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Midtown Manhattan from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Outstanding Virtual Cinematography in a CG Project. The nominees are The Creator, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Migration, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Virtual Cinematography for Spider-Verse is pretty good for it. Outstanding Model in a Photoreal or Animated Project. The nominees are Nomad from The Creator, The Areet from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the Jolly Roger from Peter Pan and Wendy, and Spider HQ from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And again, Spider-Verse once again getting in in categories where it's typically dominated by live action. Outstanding effects simulations in a photoreal feature. Uh, the Creator, Napoleon, The Nun 2, and Nyad. Uh, Napoleon getting in is pretty interesting, especially since it, like, at least given the visual, like, the effects breakdowns from the film, there's a lot of smoke, there's a lot of water simulations, so, and also there's, you know, battle crowd simulations. And then the next category, it's outstanding effect simulations in an animated feature, and the nominees are Elemental, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the Super Mario Brothers movie, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Mario. I actually, I don't mind. I mean, as much as I would complain about the Mario movie, I mean, it did look nice. Outstanding compositing and lighting in a feature. The nominees are The Bar in The Creator, Spaceships in The Creator, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, The Apartment Massacre video game style from John Wick Chapter 4, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Lighting and compositing for an animated film here. That's pretty big. Oh yeah, apparently I forgot to mention this. Uh, apparently, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the first animated film to ever be nominated for Outstanding Compositing and Lighting at the Visual Effects Society Awards. Um, how is this movie not seriously in contention to win visual effects at this point? Like, even Kubo and the Two Strings couldn't even do that. There's Outstanding Special or Practical Effects in a Photoreal Project, and the nominees are I'm a Virgo, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a TV series, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer, and Society of the Snow, and the Emerging Technology Award, to which the nominees are Machine Learning Cloth from Blue Beetle, Volumetric Neural Style Transfer from Elemental, Volumetric Capture from The Flash, and Dynamic Screen Space Textures for Coherent Stylization from Wish. Let's look at the Visual Effects Awards tally. Now, these are how many nominations each shortlisted film at the Oscars got at the Visual Effects Society. We see that Spider-Verse and the creator easily lead with seven nominations. That is insane. Like the fact that Spider-Verse was able to get that much, including compositing and lighting, which again, for an animated film is pretty astonishing. Uh, the creator only cements itself more as a big contender. Again, but again, I, I think it's gonna win in the main category here, but I don't think it's going to win at the Oscars because again, it's just not well liked. Whereas with Spider-Verse, it is the most acclaimed film in the category if it were to be nominated. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is also just affirming itself as a lock. I, honestly, I think these are our top three at this point. Our top three nominees are Spider-Verse, The Creator, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. These are the locks we have. Now, what's going to get those last two slots? Well, from what, what we could see, Poor Things and Rebel Moon performed absolutely horribly at the Visual Effects Society. Like, they didn't get anything. Like, Poor Things did not even get supporting visual effects, which I've been saying is going to show some weakness. Now, some people will say, well, All Quiet on the Western Front also didn't show up at the Visual Effects Society. This is true. However, All Quiet on the Western Front w was having a lot of other problems in other guilds. Like, it didn't show up at the Makeup and Hairstylist Guild. Uh, and really, the only major guilds it got were the Art Directors Guild, the 
uh, what was it? The, I think it was, uh, the Golden Reel Awards. I don't know. It was the Sound Mixers Guild. Poor Things is not getting that Oscar nomination. It is just not. The Oscars do not go for art house films and visual effects because art house films typically do not have very groundbreaking visual effects. And again, we even saw this with The Shape of Water. Like, The, sh the Shape of Water uh, got zero nominations of the Visual Effects Society despite getting Critics' Choice and BAFTA, but the Visual Effects Society went, we're not really impressed with what you have here. So I just don't think Poor Things is happening, even if and inevitably when Poor Things gets the BAFTA nomination. Uh, Godzilla Minus One getting only one nomination here is very telling. The, uh, the fact that it did not get Critics' Choice, it got only one nomination here at the Visual Effects Society, and it was not even longlisted at BAFTA. And keep in mind, this is a weaker year for visual effects, so there's not really much of an excuse for Godzilla Minus One to miss here, except for the fact that, look, let's be honest here, the visual effects in Godzilla Minus One were not all that great. Like, sometimes they were. Like, sometimes there were some shots where it's like, wow, that actually looks pretty real. But then there's other times, many times, where Godzilla looks pretty fake. Or, like, you know, when the compositing just doesn't look right. I think because of the imperfectness of the visual effects, we're not going to see Godzilla Minus One get nominated. Because, like... It, like, yeah, it had a budget of less than $15 million, but the visual effects branch has kind of shown that they don't really care about your narrative as much as the actual effects themselves. So I just don't think Godzilla Minus One is going to show up here. Like, if Godzilla Minus One really wanted to make a statement, it would have had to have gotten, like, a lot of nominations. Again, in the top prize, in effects simulations, in compositing. But the fact that... The character model itself was the only thing that got nominated, and that was probably the one of the least competitive categories of the ceremony. I think that's major. I think that is a major, major miss. And again, Mission Impossible, I, I just don't think that's happening. Even watching a visual effects breakdown for Mission Impossible, it's just very, very generic Mission Impossible visual effects, and they're not even, like, flawless enough for me to overlook that. The last three we can really assume are the contenders are Napoleon, Society of the Snow, and Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. A lot of people are going to be saying Indiana Jones is getting a nomination, and I don't know. I'm kind of thinking it might not be happening because, once again, a lot of the effects are not really all that perfect. Like, there is, like, the de-aging of Harrison Ford. That looks great, but everything else just seems off. The fact that Indiana Jones got the top prize nomination and only one other nomination is not a good sign. No compositing, you know, I'm not saying you need compositing, but it's like, it's it does help. Like, this kind of stuff does help, especially if you're in the top prize for visual effects. Whereas with, you know, Society of the Snow and Napoleon, well, they were competing in supporting visual effects, so you can probably see why they would miss so some of the other categories. Uh, and Society of the Snow... I don't know. I think, like, it might get in. I think it does get nominated. Indiana Jones cost over $300 million, and the fact that the visual effects are just kind of all over the place, it's not really looking good. It's like, as the director, you should have been able to clear, like, clean up all of this up and make sure it's as good-looking as it possibly can be. And with Napoleon, I mean, I guess considering it's such a weak field, it might just get in by default. I mean... The effects are pretty flawless as is, and the uh, actual visual effects breakdowns are kind of impressive. So I think ultimately our nominees for best visual effects at the Oscars are going to be the creator, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Napoleon, Society of the Snow, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And I do think Spider-Verse will win Best Visual Effects because of these potential nominees, the most likely nominee in Best Picture would be Spider-Verse. If the creator had, like, at least gotten, like, Rogue One level reviews, then it could probably beat Spider-Verse. It could probably win. But the fact that it's so divisive as is, I just don't think it's going to get that win. I just think that the creator's reception as a film, and I'm not saying this is fair, this is not fair, but it's reception as a film, the fact that people just don't really love this film all that much, 
I feel like is going to get in the way of it getting that win. And Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I mean, it is better received than the creator, but it's also a Marvel film and, or at the very least, a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. And they have never chosen one of these films as the winner for visual effects before. They went for First Man over Infinity War because despite the fact that Infinity War was probably the more deserving winner, especially when you look at the Visual Effects Society wins that it got, First Man was just more of a Best Picture contender. And among these nominees, I think it would probably go to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or... Mm, I don't know, maybe it. Maybe they would go for Society of the Snow. Because it did make a lot of Oscar shortlists. So, maybe that... Oh, you know what? I didn't consider this. I think there's a good chance Society of the Snow might win visual effects. Which I would not really be all that happy about. There are significantly more films I would put in above it. But... I mean, if we're talking about a film that could be in Best Picture, that could be Society of the Snow. So this might ultimately end up being a race between Society of the Snow and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. But next, let's get to the Motion Picture Sound Editors Awards. All right, this is going to be kind of quick, but, uh, you know, let's, go, let's just go over the Oscar Best Sound shortlist again. Uh, we have Barbie, The Creator, Ferrari, The Killer, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, The Zone of Interest. Already, we're seeing some interesting things. Like, for one... Uh, the nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Sound Editing in a Foreign Language Feature are Anatomy of a Fall, Godzilla Minus One, Society of the Snow, and The Zone of Interest. Admittedly, this doesn't really help us too much because they just put the foreign language films in a completely separate category from everything else, which, like, they did that with All Quiet on the Western Front last year, so, yeah. It's not really helpful to us much, but I do like to see Godzilla Minus One here, so that's nice. But let's get to Outstanding Achievement in Sound Editing, Feature, Dialogue, and ADR. Uh, we have Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Only Poor Things did not make the shortlist. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Sound Editing, Feature Effects, and Foley... The nominees are Ferrari, Gran Turismo, John Wick Chapter 4, The Killer, Napoleon, and Oppenheimer. Admittedly, Napoleon is showing up quite a bit. And, you know, here's the last category. Outstanding Achievement in Music Editing, Feature Motion Picture, Barbie, Creed 3, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Wonka. Now, what does this say about the best sound category at the Oscars? Well, I think this does suggest that Napoleon could maybe get in, or maybe Barbie. Right now, I'm thinking the, my predictions are, and, you know, it's probably the same as last time, Ferrari, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, The Zone of Interest. Again, I just do think The Zone of Interest is going to get that final sound slot over Barbie or Napoleon, but we'll have to see. But now, I want to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on the Visual Effects Society Awards nominations and the Motion Picture Sound Editors Awards nominations? What do you think this says about the visual effects and sound categories at the Oscars? Let me know in the comments below what you think, and consider hitting that subscribe button, because if you don't, you're going to be a visual effect.